What's up y'all? Two things I want to say before I start this video officially. First off, my hat is crooked. Oh no. That wasn't the official first thing. <laughs> the first thing is, thank you for 5k subscribers. That's just, wow, I didn't really expect that. And that's actually halfway to my personal goal, which is 10,000. So thank you all and I'm glad you like my videos. Second thing is I want to apologize if you haven't noticed for my erratic upload schedule. That is because I'm not a full-time YouTuber. Um, this isn't my job. I don't monetize my videos. I make these for fun and for you guys. So yeah, I'm sorry I can't like, you know, push out a video every week. I wanted to, but I first and foremost, I'm a student and you know, school comes first. So. I apologize in advance if you don't see videos from me for like every two to three weeks for like the next few months as I am finishing up school. But I thank you all for those who stick around anyway. Okay, so this video, like a few of my past videos, the title is a little misleading. And that's because it's one of those where I didn't really know how to title it specifically because what it's actually about is like too long to put in text and it'll fill up the thumbnail and it's just bad. So what this video is about is professional, how do I say this? Professional tips for if you want to make, I don't even know how to phrase this right. It's for what you, it's for what I think you should focus on if you want to become a professional level maker. It's the things that the customer will not explicitly, will not explicitly say they want from you, but they are the things the customer usually makes their decision on a professional versus an unprofessional maker. So I wanna go over five things today, five unspoken rules that as you grow into a professional fursuit maker, you should really focus in on, hone in on and perfect because these are the five things in my opinion that can make or break your quality level, I guess you could say. The reason I want to go over these things is if you watch all these five tips and you're like, of course you should pay attention to this stuff. Oh, I knew that. Well, <laughs> please keep it to yourself. Don't put it in the comments. But these are all things that as a first time maker, I either wrote off or I didn't pay much attention to, or I thought, hey, the customer won't mind. It's not that big of a deal, but the customer will mind. So I highly encourage these five things to be the things you really focus in on. And of course, because I say these are professional tips, you're not gonna get them overnight. Don't watch this and think, oh, I gotta go make sure that's exactly that way from now on. These are things that are specifically techniques that are going to get better over time. These are not something you want to rush. These are something you're definitely going to learn on and you're going to actually want to improve on which each suit you make. So don't fret if you're not doing any of these now. Don't fret if you still have to work on these techniques. They're long-term goals, but they will definitely pay off in the end. Okay, number one, the first thing that I would say kind of marks a pro from a non-pro, seam work. And what I mean by that is literally what it says, it's where you put your seams. Now as a first time maker, if you've watched any of my other videos talking about, you know, first time fursuits, your first fursuit, whatever you want to say, you usually glue your seams at first. And there's nothing wrong with that. Gluing seams is actually an important step because it's the easy way to learn how to line up your seams, to where to put them, to get them down to, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very important, like, you know, like I said, it's an important step. But as you become a more professional maker, the thing you're going to want to focus more on is sewing your seam. And the reason I'm bringing up seam work as an important thing is because when you start sewing your seams, of course, that's already going to put you on a step ahead, you know, like to be pro. But it's really about where you put your seams. So the big key for this tip is the less seams, the better. And please, when I say that, don't take that completely literally. Don't think that there shouldn't be any seams anywhere. If you need to put a seam somewhere, put it there. Don't compromise structural uh, strength for, you know, look. But what I'm really talking about is the fact that when you improve in skill, you'll start to learn where to and to not put the seams to hide them better. For instance, see this? This orange to white, yeah, it just looks like a marking, but there's a seam there. And that's actually where I naturally put seams on my suit's muzzles. But it works there because it's part of the design. So you learn as whether you're designing the suit or it's a suit that you've been commissioned, you learn to integrate the markings in with the seams to make it look like there's, you know, less seams and they match more with the markings. 
So that's a really important thing to focus on as you continue to grow. See where, I don't wanna call it cutting corners because it's really not, but definitely learn to sew your seams, to hide your seams, and to integrate them better all into the overall design. Okay, these next two tips, this one and the one to follow, they are the hot words for when people rate their fursuits. These are the two things that I feel a lot of customers expect as a given, which they kind of are, but at the same time, the level of quality of these two things varies from like, you know, unpro to pro, and a lot of customers express the pro level on this, regardless of the suit maker's skill level. So that's why I want to go over them. Number one is vision. You're thinking, yeah, of course the fursuit should have vision because if it doesn't have vision, how are you going to be a fursuit or you can't walk around? You might as well just have a bag on your head. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because it's all about, I'm trying to find the right word, the placement of the vision, I suppose. If you've ever worn a fursuit, you know that fursuiters have a blind spot and it's generally right here, the bridge, the bridge of the nose, because that's where the foam is, that's where it separates the eyes, and it really, really varies on fursuits. I've seen fursuits where my vision in them will be kind of like, I can only see like that much in front of me and yet I own a suit that I commissioned where my vision is basically this. I can see everything around me. So vision is very different between suit makers and just because you don't have a lot of vision versus a lot doesn't constitute pro versus unpro. It's actually more about where the eyes sit on the suit. And I'm saying that because as a first time maker, I didn't, I didn't understand two things. I first of all, especially with follow me eyes, I don't understand the pupil needed to be in the middle of the eye. So I put it towards the, you know, the tear ducts because I thought, hey, that's where an eye goes. Well, I had a hard time seeing with that because I was kind of cross-eyed. And the second thing I learned is as I was making my suits, I wasn't really paying attention to where I was putting the eye on the suit when I had it on my model's head. So I was putting my eyes kind of, you know, up here. And I kind of, you know, like my physical human head had to go like this, looking up into the eye. It was not fun, but I didn't think about that. I was like, oh, that's just how suits are. <laughs> it's not, you wanna make sure you can actually see out of your suit. So for this tip, I'm not saying really so much focus on the blind spot, because like I said, they vary from maker to maker and neither one is specifically bad. It's not specifically bad to have a tiny one or like it's not specifically good to have a large one but always make sure that your eyes are at your human eye level because there are makers who still miss out on that and it's a common mistake and it's definitely something to work on it's just all about how you pattern your head and how you just place your eyes and if you watched my what was it um my 3D eye tutorial, don't be afraid, is if you're putting your head back on and off as you're testing it. If you can't see out of your eye, carve it in, put it in there, like dig out that foam base, make sure it fits. It's definitely gonna pay off in the end. All right, the third thing on the list, the second hot word, and that is breathing, or rather how airways or whatever you wanna call it. Once again, it's another very, you know, unspoken, un ex highly expected thing about a fursuit you've either commissioned or whatever. Arguably, this is the harder of the two. This is the harder to get right because, you know, eyes are a little easy. Even if you can't see, you can go back in and, you know, adjust them. Breathing is a little harder to get, I would say, for the first time maker. And once again, I'm gonna bring you to past me and my wonderful novice fursuit making exploits. And I've definitely mentioned this before, but I didn't really care, I guess, about this concept. And I ended making up uh, making a fursuit that had an airway about this tiny and it sloped down and it was really weird. And I wore that fursuit to a con. I stood in line for the picture for the fursuit photo, you know, amongst everybody where I was, you know, shoulder to shoulder with other fursuiters. And I was this close, uh, this close to passing out because I couldn't breathe. And I was freaking out. So, Pay attention to how big you make your mouth. You don't have to make it some gaping maw. You don't have to make it like huge and have a, be a giant hole. You just, it's more about the shape of the muzzle, I guess you would say. It's more about how you carve out the inside of it. Just generally carving out about like that much space in the muzzle. I don't know how well you can see, but 
that's really all you need. I can breathe perfectly fine right now, aside from, you know, the stereotypical fursuit hotness. I'm not like out of breath, obviously, because I can sit here and talk, but just something like this is, that's all you need. But be careful because it's so easy to, you know, put the muzzle closed or put it too close together or not carve it out and out enough. So you definitely want to focus on that when you're making a suit. Please focus on how far apart you make the bottom and top job because while I was at MFF, I got into the elevator with a fursuiter and his mouth was open, but he had a tongue in the mouth and the tongue was, it wasn't even that thick, but it filled up the entire space of the open mouth. So the mouth that was open was completely full with tongue and I could very audibly hear him panting. So I knew he was dying in there because even if he had an open mouth, he couldn't breathe. So that's why it's very important to focus on getting the breathing hole <laughs> just the right size so you can still breathe out of it, but it's not like, you know, showing everything off and yeah. Number four, this is the most silent but deadly of these five tips. It's the one that the customers are probably going to be the least forward about when they're looking for it, but the most vocal when they see it is not there. And it's also, I would say, arguably, it is the hardest of all of these five tips. And that is symmetry. <laughs> symmetry is probably one of the hardest things to, you know, get right in any kind of art form. Trust me, it's not just fursuits. It's, it's evil, but, and it's really hard, but when it pays off, it pays off. But the reason I want to talk about it is because this is also probably, I would say, the one that's going to take the longest to get down right because you could have been making fursuits for like five years and you're still gonna struggle with this it's just it's really hard to get down because fun fact the human face isn't symmetrical so <laughs> I don't think we should expect fursuits to be symmetrical to be honest <laughs> but that's beside the point what I'm saying is it's just it's really something you have to work on it's something that when you were making your phone base, you're gonna wanna go back and back and back and just keep going at it. Symmetry is just one of the hardest things to get down. And honestly, even professional fursuit makers don't have it down perfectly. You might see the pictures and you might be like, wow, look at how perfect that suit is. It's like, looks everything. Here's the key. For professional fursuit makers take pictures to slightly adjust their fursuits so you can't see the asymmetries. <laughs> Not that they have a lot of them, but the thing that I would say in this instance that separates the pro for the unpro is the ability to fake it till you make it. Pro fursuit makers have gotten down the art of, you know, getting as close as possible. I can guarantee you there's tons of professional fursuits out there that are not completely sy symmetrical, but they're pretty darn close. So that's what I want to say. You should focus on symmetry. Don't focus on getting it perfect. You're going to literally go insane if you do, like going back and nitpicking, but definitely try and get as close as you can. A tip for doing that is doubling over. So of course your phone base, you're going to want to get it as symmetrical as you can. But if you see one side is, you know, like bigger or smaller than the other, what you should do is tape up half the face and double it over to the other side. That way, if you have small, like, inconsistencies on one half of the face, foam is soft and it's very, like, susceptible to being bent in. So if you pattern one side of the face and you glue down and you sew in, it will pull the, like, slightly off the slightly off parts into place to, you know, kind of get that similar shape. You can also do that with the bodysuit. You can just pattern one half of it and double it over, especially if the pattern is symmetrical. That's my tip for getting the symmetry as close as possible. I do it a lot. I do it with a lot of my pieces. I do it with my hands, my body, my head generally. So that's where you can start if you're still having trouble with symmetry. And last tip on the list, number five, this is the tip that kills the most fursuit making businesses because even though I talked about those other four things that customers expect, this is the one that generally they see the easiest. It's the one that they take the maker down the easiest with. And it's, it's honestly not that hard at all. The reason this tip is more often than not, you know, overlooked is because makers are either too lazy or they don't think about it, which more often than not, it's that they just don't think about it. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's why I'm going to bring it up right now. And that is 
reinforcement. And if you're wondering what I mean by reinforcement, it's literally quality checking. It's going back over your seams. It's double sewing. It's basically anything that you can do to, you know, make sure that your work is top quality, to reinforce it, to make sure it stays. Because I'm sure a lot of you have heard more often than not, oh, my fursuit's falling apart because the seam popped, or something came unglued, or whatever. And it's just, it's so easy. Double over your seams. And honestly, if you're hand sewing, you can glue over those seams to reinforce them. There's so many ways to reinforce things. And none of the there's no like set way to do it. It's just basically just strengthening the stitch or the backing or whatever to improve the quality, to make sure the suit lasts longer. And it definitely sets pro makers apart from unpros. Not saying all pro makers reinforce their things, not saying all unpro makers don't reinforce them. But what I'm saying is if you definitely want a product that lasts longer, that doesn't get you caught in those pop seams, definitely reinforce where you can. It'll be worth it overall in the end when you have a product that's lasting your customer five plus years. Alrighty everybody, those are my five tips for what I think you should focus on to become a professional fursuit maker. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you possibly learned something. I hope I could uh, help you reinforce your knowledge of something you already knew. I don't know. And I wish you all much luck in becoming professional fursuit makers. So with that, the video is over. As always, re request what you would like to see in the comments. Thank you all for watching me and like watching my videos because like honestly, I do these videos for you guys. I want to help you out. And yeah, quick question before I go though. I know a lot of furry YouTubers do skits and just fun stuff. I know I'm basically been, you know, sticking to the educational video kind of thing, but I'm wondering, would you guys like to see things from me like that? like? Just, you know, fun furry YouTuber stuff, or would you rather I just keep talking about fursuit making techniques or stuff like that? Let me know. Um, I can't promise any new content like that anytime soon, but I would definitely like to try it in the future if that's something you are all interested in seeing. So until next time, bye! Mm -hmm.